I used to like Spongebob. I always did. But what I just saw scared the bejesus out of me. One time, when I was messing go animate, I found a video from someone named XXX underscore tryhard newscaper underscore XXX that claims to have a lost episode of Spongebob. The download link was in the description. I checked the download link, and I downloaded it. Then, it finished downloading. It started out with the normal theme song, but something was off. There was hyper-realistic blood everywhere. Or, I think it is ketchup. Never mind, it's ketchup. When the theme song ended, the title card read Spongebob. The truth, with a black background. I continued to watch it because I was so curious that I didn't even bother trying to stop myself from watching this piece of shittery. Spongebob appeared in his house. He has black eyes and hyper-realistic blood came out of them. It was so realistic, I didn't know what reality is anymore. Then, Spongebob told the forbidden truth of himself. Here is what he said. To whom it may concern, I am exposing myself because I have no life anymore. We are all living in purgatory because we are dead from the nuke that hit it here. I must kill myself. Spongebob killed himself in excruciating detail. I smashed my computer because it was so hyper-realistic that it's boring. Spongebob appeared in real life. You're next, said Spongebob. Then, Spongebob killed me. My brother found me laying there, dead. My brother turned Super Saiyan. They had an epic fight, ha <laughs> Also, I am a ghost now. Never watch lost episodes of Spongebob. Oh no, it's Spongebob GDJSGJKDFJDUIFAWEFW. If you're reading this, I send it him to hell. By the way, you're next. Scooby-Doo is just a normal, popular kids television show, right? Wrong. Scooby-Doo is a drug-induced cartoon and is very fantasy-like. Shaggy is a hippie high school dropout who spends most of his free time getting high up on drugs. Scooby-Doo does exist, but he doesn't talk. It's the hallucination. Scooby and Shaggy sat in the back of the mystery machine because they would smoke weed back there, thus explaining why when the mystery machine took off, smoke came out of it. As for Scooby snacks, they are drugged up. This explains why Scooby and Shaggy get more courage after eating them, simply because the drugs kick in. Shaggy and Scooby eat a ton, and it is a cause of the munchies. Scooby also earned the nickname Scooby Dooby Doo, from all the doobies, or joints, he took in. Also, in the movie, Shaggy eventually falls in love with a girl named Mary Jane. Mary Jane is quite synonymous to Mayor Anna. But what about the rest of the gang? Why do the jock and popular girl hang out with the nerd and the stoner kid? Well, Fred and Daphne are a couple from the popular gang, but they didn't care as much about getting popular as they did getting high, and the gang gets drugs because Velma messes with the chemistry of growing weed, Shaggy will stop at no costs for getting some, Daphne has tons of money being rich, and Fred being the leader of it all. Also, Fred and Daphne are sex addicted. They secretly go off into the mystery machine to exangent to strange sexual acts while Velma, Shag, and Scoob go together in the complete other direction. And what else about Velma? A lot of people think she is a lesbian, but truth is, she hangs out with the gang less for the drugs, more for the dog. Scooby. She is zoosexual, meaning she is attracted to animals. She did sexual things to Scooby while the others weren't looking. The eye was died. It was a bright and sunny day and I, Cleo Watsons, was walking to school. I had no friends because I never really liked socializing and so that's why I got bullied. As I walked into the schoolyard she entered the building, the scent of expensive perfume filled my nose. I looked around me to see people gossiping about this kid named Jeff whose brother Lee had gone to jail for a year. I've seen him around before and we never really interacted. I walked to my locker, it was right next to a random locker, no one really used it. Then Jeff walked next to me, I got sweaty but I still looked at him, he had brown hair and dark bugs under his eyes and he looked really depressed. He was grabbing something in this locker, it was the third time I encountered Jeff, I never really knew what he looked up close cause he never really used his locker considering I never even knew that someone owned that locker. I looked away when I saw his head turn to my direction. I looked to my right, for a few minutes I heard his footsteps. Turning to him he had walked to the right hallway. I didn't say anything. 
I looked to my left side, sign Ryan, Adam and Zack entered the school. They spotted me and Zack smirked. Ryan ran to me and slapped my left cheek. Tears came out of my eyes and yelled, why are you doing this? I never did anything to you. I ran away, putting my hands on my face while I cried. The, the next day I didn't feel like going to school but my mom still talked me into it. Walking to school I saw Jeff sitting on a bench near the bus stop. I gathered up the courage and said um hi I'm Cleo. Walking up to him and sitting next to him. After a few seconds of awkward silence he responded um yeah hi. Jeff. I regretted ever starting this conversation. Oh um so I want to ask if you mind. He nodded in response looking at the ground. Can I sit with you at lunch? My cheeks went red as those words came out my mouth. He looked at me with a blank face. Yeah sure. His voice was blank, emotionless. I smiled brightly, looking him directly in the eyes. I looked to my right trying to hide my blush and saw the school bus. The bus stopped in front of us. I stood up and so did Jeff. Walking to the bus and entering, I heard loud screams of teenagers. I rolled my eyes and walked to the back until I accidentally tripped on someone's foot. I tried to maintain my balance but ended up face first on the floor. Everyone laughed me and I just hurried to get up and sit at the back. I looked back to where Jeff was and he was just staring at me. I turned around and ran to the back of the bus where I always sit. After that me and Jeff didn't speak to each other, heck I didn't even know where he sat. But when lunch came my brain suddenly stopped and then I remembered that I asked Jeff to sit with him. I smiled but inside and was dying. My feet went weaker and weaker as I approached the cafeteria. I crossed the room to see Jeff sitting alone and on his phone, seemingly texting someone. I walked over to him being careful not to trip on anything. When I finally reached his table I sat down without saying anything. He didn't seem to see me sit down so I coughed. He looked up from his stupid phone and smiled. Hey, that surprised me since that was not the Jeff in was talking to before at the bus stop. Hey, I smiled back. He straightened his position, making my smile wider. Where's your food? I asked him noticing all this time he didn't have anything well except his phone and backpack. Oh I'm done eating. I was embarrassed knowing I was the one to ask and be late. In so sorry, he chuckled and shaked his head it's fine. I wiped the fake sweat from my forehead and that made Jeff laugh. Oh god how about you? Where's your food? I smirked at him and flipped my hair sassily. I'm on diet. We both left. He was my first friend. Me and him were friends then from then on. After one year Jeff's brother, Lee Woods, got out of prison. And after I haven't heard from Jeff but I did hear that Jeff went crass, that made me worry a lot. He may be a prick, but he is my prick, my hands are tired. He went to the hospital cause a kid caught him on fire. He killed his parents and brother after he got out of JDC. After a month I snapped. Ryan, Adam and Zach came up and made fun of me hurt me. So I grabbed my pocket knife and carved one's eyes out, stabbed the other and ran off and left Ryan there bleeding while the others lie motionless. I cut out my eyes and my mom came in while I was crying. Sweetie what are you huh? She said cowardly while I was holding two nifs up to her sweetie, your eyes. I can hear and smell and feel people through the ground and air, I said to her. Yes sweetie please pee put the nifs down and we can sort this o out, she said with her voice shaking. No mom, go get dad and we can settle this. I yelled. All right, sweetie, I will go get it him, she said voice trembling in fear. She ran to the bedroom. I slowly crept up the hall hearing what my mother was saying. Sweetie, get the gun and call the police. She said as she saw me appear in the doorway. You lied just like Jeff's parents. I said grabbing hold of both parents. As my dad shot up the last thing they heard was, feel the pain like I did, fucking shitty catchphrase. I said goodnight as I drew on the wall. On the wall it says feel the pain. And I smiled and crawled out the window and disappeared into the woods. 
So I was on my computer searching for cool glitches to do on games and I found a glitch called Aladdin is dead. I clicked on the picture for it and saw that his eyes were gone, no blood flowing from it, just jet black where his eyes should be. I said, cool I will try it on my emulator, I did the glitch and my game froze, so I said, I knew it wouldn't work, so I went and played Super Mario World and beat Bowser. I said, I want to play Aladdin, so I did and when I started the game I noticed Aladdin had no eyes, just jet black like the glitch said, so I thought hey the glitch worked, but I had no idea it was evil, I started the game and the monkey, I forgot his name, BTW, looked like an imp, but that's not the worst part, the worst part is whenever I would jump on someone, they decompose and then I would beat a level and in Instead of the genie showing up the devil would appear and the wheel would be a pentagram so I spun it and I landed on one of the points and the devil started chanting a very unsettling ritual it sounded like and then that is when I tried to turn off the game he said no you're mine now and then my door slammed closed by itself and the devil stuck his hand out of my screen and said your soul is mine then he started to suck my soul once he finished my power went out and I well let's just say I am a ginger without the red hair Hey my name is Christopher Williams, I am big fan of Rouge the Batty and I about to make Rouge call her. Dark Rouge X I made by Gmod I find a preface picture to Kurt I got scare of her right now in way she eat people. In shock people blood out she was white and Gary old picture in her sister is white Rouge. She a powerful lady she hurt people I kill to her line as I am dark rouge and I go take your heart out and white one I am white rouge I will suck your soul out she found. Knuckles and knuckles turn head and she got a creepy smile her face and her sister too. Then he about her powerful of terror darkness I think I made her in god in my computer. Start ring picture of rouge x the one is my rose head got cut off by dark rouge. And two is Amy Rose was WLKING with Sally Akron and they saw Dark Rouge and White Rouge they were start WLKING to the Amy and Sally run and screaming loud they stop. Running they saw Sonic X and ISSAID Sonic what he doing there and he said to them. You're too slow and you cannot escape from them in Dark Rouge and White Rouge. Attacking them and eat them to in Sonic laughing I said. Go by Amy and Sally start laughing again so me I got so trace how they kill Amy and Sally fed are good people. I said why why w h h h h h h h h h h why start crying I tear off my computer I see a dark and white outside my windows and then he start a creepy smiley and bleed teeth and bloody p i c t h black i one dark rouge vias pitch black and red they bout disappearing and I don't believe that I never never star making horror stuff no more I start dreaming about femi a dream is dark black and I was in there with Sonic and two sister and they said we are god now and we are going to eat you and creepy ben drowned behind me i said ben what you doing here they all eat me i wore cut by tear saw dark rouge in my bed never she her in her sister again